Today's show is brought to you by Hearst Ranch Grass-Fed Beef, available on the internet at hearstranch.com. We talk about food, we talk about music, with musical dudes, finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. I am one of your host, DJ Never Forget. Uh, Terry Diabolic uh, is uh, in the office today. That was just the spring standard. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. Thank you. Uh, uh, what did I say? I said it's... Oh. Yeah, there you are. Hello. Hi. I said uh, it's very delicious to be here. Um, nice one. Yeah. But before we get to that, um, Allison, are you there? I am here. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm Allison Prizebecker. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. Woo-hoo! And Thank you. welcome back to New York. Thank you. <laughs> um, nine year, nine long years. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Allison is the restaurateur of Allison on Dominic, Allison by the Beach, Allison at the Maidstone Arms Hotel, and Allison at the Inn and Quag. Did I get that right? Quag. 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 Yes. Oh, very good. But um, you have uh, been out of New York for nine years, and you are returning um, with uh, Allison eighteen. So yes. welcome back. Thank you. But for those of us, like myself, who was not in New York nine years ago, um, why don't you tell us first about Allison on Dominic Street? Well, uh, Allison on Dominic Street actually opened in 1989, and it was on Dominic Street, which is a little teeny tiny two-block street above the Holland Tunnel. And um, after 9-11, it was very, very difficult down there, so we decided... Maybe it was time. We'd had a great 13-year run. Maybe it was time to close up shop because I did have the restaurant in Long Island, Allison by the Beach, which was going gangbusters, right. especially because so many people moved out there. And I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I just 
shut down here and stay out there because also my landlord wanted to get rid of the building and it just seemed time. It just seemed time. So I moved out there. Um, but Alice on Diamond Street was a very small. It was 52 seats, um, small dining room, banquettes, lots of velvet, tall taper candles, which you wouldn't be allowed to have today. Right. Um, and it was very romantic, and it was kind of quirky because it was out of the way. No, when you say romantic, um, in doing my research, uh, I had read that like that was like the place to propose to somebody. Is that true? Was it? I guess it might have been. <laughs> like, like, how would it go? Like, what's it? Would a guy call up and be like, "I want to propose to my girlfriend"? Was it lost up? Like, how did you have like a like engagement package that someone could like order for dinner? No, <laughs> no. But we did have people call and say, you know, I'm going to propose tonight. I'd like to hide the ring in the food, or I'd like. Oh yeah. So what? What are your tips for? <laughs> or I'd like for? a bottle with you know the ring tied on it. I didn't really like handling the rings too much. It made me very nervous. <laughs> Uh, um, what are your tips for, like, let's say I wanted to take my um, my lady friend out there and I was going to propose to her. What are some, like, hits or miss of, like, put the put it order this for the ring, put it in this, like, a- anything, uh, a little bit of a guidance? Well, don't put it in some kind of food where it's going to end up, you know, where she's going to swallow it. R- has that happened? I get close calls. Luckily, it hasn't happened in my restaurant, okay. but you can see close calls, but we don't do that. You know, it's always nice to put it, like, on top of an oyster or, um, you know, if you've got some kind of um, appetizer that's got, uh, I don't know, a twig of rosemary, I mean, to hang it on something. Now, did, now, did you find that people normally wanted to bring it out, like, first course, leave it towards the end? Did you, like, was it kind of just... Different. All Everybody's different. Everybody's okay. different. Personal preference. Everybody's different. Somebody, actually, one person had it, you know, I remember dropped it off beforehand. That made me very nervous because he wanted it right there wrapped in her napkin. Right. So okay. it was right there. Oh, right there. Other people wait till the end of the meal. You know, somebody once, though, um, came up to us mm-hmm. and decided not to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. So those things happen, too. <laughs> wow. I actually never even considered that option. Yes, but then we also had somebody on the other side of it who made who made an engagement ring out of a um, straw paper. Oh, because okay. he did it on the fly. So for every little you know hurtful one, there's always something happy. Okay. Um, so then um, between from when you closed and now you had a couple of restaurants. Now, did you do any traveling? Did you go explore the world, or were you just restauranteering these last nine years of um, just in between the two the two places? No, I did some traveling. I mean, I have a, a son who's now 14, so I'm sort of tied in a little bit to the school year here. But we together actually took some great trips, um, some that have nothing to do with food, like we went to the Galapagos. Um, oh, my God, we've been to Belize a couple times. We've, you know, I've taken him to Europe. We go to Europe every summer. So, uh, yeah, I t- kind of took advantage of not having a restaurant because it, I sold everything in 2008. So I've had a good three years. Where you know it's really cool too because we've gotten to spend some we you know got to spend some great time together, like from eleven to fourteen. That's amazing. No, those are good years, and now they're like oh, it's perfect. Now, now it's like mom, left. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't you care. Know, um, mom is no longer cool. So that's us. And then yeah, you know, as being older, I would tell he'll come back and appreciate. Like mom used to take me on all these great trips. Mom, why can't I go now? So just give it like a decade or a half, and you'll be <laughs> right right back in awesome mom spot. So okay. so wh- so why come back? So okay. So why did you come back to the city? Um, well, and t- when I sold everything, I was really ready to come back to New York. I had never planned to stay out in the island full time. It wasn't. Um, it was something that just happened. I really had expected to be out there for a couple of years. Uh, you know, because the economy was great out there in those first couple of years after 9 11. Mm-hmm. But then as people started moving away and moving back, it's very tough on the east end of the island. It's a, you know, summer community. With the college closing down, it really became a summer community. It, and it's financially, it's very difficult. I was born and raised in New York. Wow. And it was it was time for me to come here and I also felt for my son that there's just not enough for, for kids to do out there. The teenagers right. there's just not enough to do whereas in the city you yeah, hope the whole world at your feet. You know, you got a thousand and one movies, you've got ten you've got everything and if you take advantage of it there's just a lot there for our kids. So um, we sold everything and moved back here. Okay. 
and then I just took some time. I really wasn't sure, actually, whether I would do another restaurant. That was kind of a question, because like, I wanted to make sure it was the right deal and the right partners and all that, and I started doing product development, which I absolutely adore. And um, it's a totally different world, corporate world, but I, I, love, I, I love the recipe and development. It was really fun. And just when I started thinking, yeah, you know what, maybe I'll just do this. And you know, this is really good. I'm getting a lot of work, and it's all fun. Mike calls, my business partner, and one thing led to the next, led to the next, and here we are. And here you are, um, in the Ten Commandment building of all places. Yes. Which I have <laughs> seen. So what is it that um, Allison 18 brings, you know, new to your, you know, massive portfolio already? I'm sorry, you broke up on oh, a little there? Oh, no problem. So what does um, Allison 18 bring new to the portfolio um, of your other restaurants, like what's how is it different? That's a really interesting question because we didn't strive to do anything that different. We strive to bring what we bring to the table, which is a really comfortable experience. Um, yeah, one where you're taken care of, where your food's really good. We're not trying to be out of the box food wise. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to see foam here. Not that Robert couldn't do it because he can do almost anything, but we choose to go for the really simple, flavor-forward food um, where there's not a whole lot of surprise, but there's a whole lot of comfort. Um, amazing. And uh, what is one thing that you feel that you've, you know, in the time off in the new restaurant that you are bringing to the table, like a new approach or a new way to, uh, to look at things this time around? Uh, well, the boring part of it is probably with less emotion and more of a business eye. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's a fair answer. Um, because I've been doing it a long time now. You know, when, you, when you're 20, 29, opening your first restaurant, there's a lot of emotion there and a lot of um, blinders on and a lot of excitement. I know the pitfalls now, so uh, there's a lot more of a business side to it. Um I'm a little more relaxed in certain good ways. I'm, I I think I probably listen more or try to. Mm-hmm. Amazing. As a boss, probably. <laughs> I hope. Uh, that's right. Well, Allison, uh, we uh, just want to thank you for calling in. We want to wish you the best of luck. Um, can thank you give you. us like the nuts and bolts where you are, hours, where to find you online, if you can make reservations. Absolutely. Yes, we have a website. It's www.allison18, all written out, one word. Um, we are open um, seven days a week. We are open for lunch and dinner and brunch. Uh, starting uh, Lunch opens at noon, brunch at 11.30, for, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. We also have a kiosk up in the front of the uh, restaurant that opens at 8 o'clock in the morning for takeaway cappuccino and coffee and the best Allison scones you've ever had. Amazing. So we are a sort of full service breakfast, lunch, and dinner operation. So you're saying just hang out all day? Wait. Oh, certainly. And we ha- in our event space, we have an 80-inch screen, and we can come down and hang out there, too. We have a full bar and a lot of fun to be had. Final question. Is this as proposal-friendly as the early restaurants? Oh, I'm so sorry. What was that? Is this as proposal friendly as the earlier restaurants? You know, I think it is. It's different, but we're also in a different proposal world. Um, uh, people are proposing really funky places these days. I think absolutely. I, I see. We still have a lot of corner bank apps. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Allison, thank you so much. Best of luck, and uh, I cannot thank wait you. to dine there. Thanks so much. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Uh, all right, so we have the Spring Standards coming up. We're going to play a couple songs first. But first, I want to let everybody know that on May 10th at the Guggenheim, Zola Jesus is going to be playing live and has entrusted and enlisted the talents of one of her most deeply admired performers, J.G. Thurwell. Thurwell is a composer, producer, performer based in Brooklyn who works under many pseudonyms and including Menorexia, Fetus, Steroid, Maximus, and several others. Uh, he has worked with an extraordinary roster of artists, including Nine Inch Nails, Acceptor, Kronos Quartet, and The The. Um, Kronos Quartet will be joining Zola Jesus and Gigi Thurwell uh, at the show on May 10th, and I just bought a ticket, so there are still tickets available. So I'm going to play a track off of uh, Zola Jesus' latest record called Avalanche, and then the new Hot Chip single, Night and Day, and then we'll be back with the Spring Standards to talk about Delaware. I saw Flyers cap. Go Flyers. And uh, candied walnuts and eating salad without forks. You're listening to Snacky Tunes. Here we go.
got me working night and day. Oh man, new hot chip. Are there any hot chip fans? Yeah, they're, they're not, awesome. I, I mean, want to get my groove on. They oh, yes. l- they are literally like they just you know consistent. You know, there's gonna be some ballads on that record, and you're gonna like not like them as much as the other song first, and they'll be the strongest. <laughs> um, so um, before we get started with the spring standards, I just want to announce that our summer barbecue series is starting up again May 16th at Good Company on uh, 10th Hope Street, which is Roebling and Hope. Uh, we have Joe Carroll of Fetisau and Sam Hassan behind the grill, and we have Turing Machine um, uh, manning the decks of DJing. So tickets will go on sale next week, I believe, and you can always walk up. Uh, and yeah, so anyway, that's enough announcements. I think Spring Sanders, welcome to Snack Tunes. Oh, thank, thank you, sir. thank you, James, James, and Heather. This Correct. is so, so easy. I know. Right? Um, it would have been so weird if your twin brother was here, and then you guys would have looked identical, and they would have had the same exact names, and it would have been all sorts of like double time. I think that's kind of how it's. We could have played tricks on all the people tricks, here. Yeah, all the people. Oof. Look how packed it is. I know, it's, it's spring. Crazy. I mean, this is uh, spring is in the air. Spring is definitely in the air. Yes. I definitely skipped all of like the nasty April weather, and now it's like May. Yeah. Well, it's almost May. We'll say yeah. it's May. It's, it's yeah. April thirtieth. We're all intense. We were down at South by, and we were like, when we get back to New York, it's going to be basically summertime. And, and then there was April, <laughs> there was so, April. which was <laughs> not basically not summertime. <laughs> yeah, um, it was terrible. So, why don't you give our listeners um, a little bit of background? Alrighty. Um, well, I met these two boys um, in. Uh, I grew up in Delaware. I met James Clear. That's me. Um, that's that one. Uh, wearing the flyer, Flyers beanie. Wearing, wearing the Flyers Who was at this yep. game yesterday? <laughs> More on that later. More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Can we also just arbitrarily mention he's wearing a Star Wars t shirt? Yeah. Not that that's relevant to yeah, but I don't think yeah, I don't just think it was on... it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. Um, let them let them see. Yeah, yeah. just to visualize. With their ears. Uh, so yeah, I met James when he transferred to my high school, and we uh, and we connected pretty pretty uh, quickly. And then he invited me um, very very generously to come jam out with him and his his uh, his amazing awesome, friend, amazing mm-hmm. friend in their sweet folk duo that they were you know making the rounds of the antique shops and local uh, garage sales. Uh, they were just sweeping the township. Sweeping campfire jams, youth jamborees. Square. Youth jamborees left and right. Exactly. And I was like, Skif- all right, Skiffle guys, gigs. maybe I will. I have, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll do that. So anyway, that's where we sort of got our humble beginnings. It was, we were, you know, 15, 16 years old. And really pre-college started, youngsters. Uh, <laughs> yes, very, like little babies and started playing music, started writing music. Uh, and then just like sort of kept doing it through the end of that of that era and lost touch a little bit in call co- in the college years and then all moved to New York for various uh, and sundry reasons and um, and then sort of found ourselves back together all of a sudden and there we were. Was it like uh, <laughs> ran into a bar or was it more of like a? We, we were all rain drenched. Uh, on a street, <laughs> and we just, and we just running, were sprinting, sprinting, yeah, and we all were running, other. yeah, it was, and we just collided. Yeah. This house some, some seems like a lie. No, 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 <laughs> no. And then you know, you know that part of the Matrix, like yeah, yeah, slow motion. We all hit each other midair, and then at, at the view went completely around us in stop animation style, Matrix style. Side question: <laughs> All three of you have microphones. Who does the banter on stage? Oh jeez! I think a three-headed all of us. beast. On one of stage. us, one of us is like another one will be like, "Yeah, let's do this thing." Another, it doesn't. It's if never you, planned. It's just whatever, whatever happens. If you want the backstage truthful answer? It's whoever has to tune usually isn't bantering. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, why don't we get a song? Okay, we uh, sure. to play. And uh, I know that you brought keyboards and other things, but due to. Uh, Time constraints on my end. On no, my uh, end. On my end. Our bag. That's, Come on. That's me being professional and covering for <laughs> you, you guys. Oh, you are, so now you're you blowing it. Damn it. Sorry. Uh, okay, so what are you going to play first? Is this a song called uh, Crushing Pennies? And is this off the new yeah, EP? Yeah, so this is off the. Uh, there are two EPs uh, that are being released as a single record, and this is off the uh, first of the two, which is entitled Yellow. And uh, it's called Look, Crushing and, Pennies. And just yeah. think about this two EPs released at the same time, not one L. Well, not one LP, but nope. two EPs. Nope. We're going to Correct. discuss that when we get yeah, back. We will, we will. It's Spring, like a fraction. Yeah, yeah, Spring Standards Live on Snacky Tunes. One, two, Set the 
these flowers trying Hung up while they're dying No bed left to lay And oh, my love, won't you take a bit of love This hurt from me So, uh, math. So, mathematics. 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 Let's talk about calculus. No, let's talk about the, the new WP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know sure. what? I thought of a great analogy. Wall okay. singing? Well, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing. I have to admit, this is one of those places where this is like, we. I don't know if people know the setup. There's a glass, there's a window here, and people are eating next to us. There's lovely food on the table. It's like an ADHD person's nightmare. So, it is my nightmare. I'm like thinking about everything. I'm like, oh, that's a cool camera she has. Yeah. Well, that's Pose there to it's just I'm like halfway through the song I was like what's the next oh I'm singing anyway Wait, you just had a point? excusing so her. you had a point yeah I had a point which is that um I and actually I was inspired by our location and inspired by the theme of your show and I was thinking about how okay so take a restaurant for example and you know you can you have appetizers you have entrees you have all salads you have <laughs> aperitifs you have dessert you have all of these different uh, sections that all sort of work in in, 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 uh, in conjunction with one another to make this amazing meal but uh, if you were to arrive at a restaurant and they had just piled everything onto one big plate you would say uh, well yeah but uh, that's not okay. the point so I got it I got it so further down, further down. Um, I, I feel like this <laughs> this record can be approached like a Records. like a these two records this this album which is one meal but from start to finish is comprised of smaller things um can be taken as like two complementary uh like two complementary flavors um so when you play it live do you mix the two or are they kept separately it's a great question that you have there greg um <laughs> thank you <laughs> and i'm gonna respond by saying we mix it up yo yeah we do i think we it's do also- because sometimes you do want yeah. sweet and savory just intertwined you want some chocolate covered pretzels 
I think I think I can I can I can I can help uh, soothe everyone's everyone's um, concerns over the two versus Flyers. One. James steps into the ring. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> redheaded redheaded Flyers. James. Ding ding ding. No, I think I think the only thing singular about the release is is the release itself. It is released singularly, but it is indeed two EPs. And we could we recorded them with months apart. We could release them months apart. But I think the, the idea is to provide an instant dichotomy um, that isn't really uh, like a cut and cut like a you know cut down the middle black and white dichotomy. It's more subtle, but to to, to think of the old days as well of like. You know, side A and side B. It, the records were always it was one release, but it was two packages, two audio, two sonic packages that are, were separated by the amount of time it took for you to flip a record. Which for a lot of people, it was like a long time. You'd wait, and they'd be, oh, I gotta flip it, and then you flip it. But there was always that that moment. So we're kind of forcing that moment in the digital world where you have to kind of load the other EP, put the other EP in your CD player if you're like from the '90s, <laughs> or or like cl- click on the other you know file that you've downloaded, like you know. Um, which you can do on Tuesday when the album comes out. But um, who's putting it out? Um, it's uh, well, we have our own sort of little label, Parachute Shooter Records, where we're, we're distributing our own stuff. Um, everything we've done <clears> thus far. This is our third album, and everything has been fan funded uh, and uh, Kickstarter and independent or? releases. Sure. Well, before that, we one. even yeah, even before Kickstarter was huge, we, we did a, we did our own. We made we, we had like a PayPal setup thing. We've been, we've been doing that for you know well before Kickstarter was cool. What is what is the top thing a fan can get? Oh man, like our, din- dinners. Our, our well, first one was a joke. Basically, we we told them we'd give them their own private island. Okay, you know, and that was what. Yeah, like, but it was if you donated like ten million dollars, we just shot yeah. for the moon. Right, ten million dollars. We'll find an island for you. Yeah, we'll, no, but we'll on the practical end, though, I mean, we've flown. We have flown uh, because the the reward of cash was so high. We have flown to people in the Midwest and had like um, you know, a hoedown at their house with acoustic jam. We and cooked a dinner them dinner. And, we wrote them a song. We are totally becoming friends after yeah, this yeah. show. <laughs> um, let's get another song in. Okay, right, sure, cool. yeah, sure. That would be Wait, great. Can we get one from the other EP? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, so yeah, the, uh, you know, in a nutshell, uh, yellow is the more acoustic version, uh, and gold is the more sort of rock uh electric version of two sides of what we do now obviously today here in the studio we just have acoustic guitars so uh this is going to be sort of uh gold through a yellow lens a little bit and this song's called watch the moon disappear amazing live on snacky tunes Okay, I'm sorry that 
Wow. Awesome. Thanks. That's some nice harmony. Oh, oh, That's wow. a really nice harmony. We hate harmony. Thanks, um, dude. It's trying to get our Fleetwood on. You know. I, you know what? I literally just wrote my brother. They sound like Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah, we were we, we <laughs> in the studio. I was like, do more of a Fleetwood thing. No, I, I, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want them to be like, hey, man, we don't appreciate that. But no, seriously, I, <laughs> no, I love sure. Fleetwood Mac. So We very much appreciate it. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's, it's like a production blueprint. Just, just to have on every, even when we were just doing the basics before the harmonies were in there, I was like, could you do more of like a Mick Fleetwood thing? Yeah. Yeah. Said, yeah. Yeah. Could you do more of a Stevie tambourine yeah. deal? No, it's uh, that was really good. Um, Thanks. so EP comes out, tour generally follows. Yes. What's the tour plan? <laughs> the tour plan is uh, we hit the road this uh, Sunday. Actually, is our first uh, tour date. It's in Ann Arbor, Michigan, followed by uh, in no particular order. Although they are all in the following week. I know we're doing Chicago. We are doing St. Louis. We are doing Cleveland. We are doing uh, Columbus, I believe. Colombo. Um, Colombo. And, uh, and we'll be in the Midwest. There's places in for between, the next yeah. week, and then uh, and then in June we're doing the full country. So uh, any any corner of this of this fine country of ours will be uh, will be uh, covered by us. With That's the true. exception it, of parts of the southeast, unfortunately. Yes, and if you're in the, if you're in the Midwest, catch us in May because we will not be uh-huh. returning to those neighborhoods in, in June. But um, but we'll be going all the way up. We'll do uh, some dates on the in the Northwest and in California and stuff like that. We'll be yeah, we'll be out there for a while. Coming back in July, I believe July the first week of July. We'll, mm-hmm. be, back. we'll be opening for Rhett Miller. Amazing. Time. Yeah. Um, that is fantastic. That's um, great. I want to get one more song in. Uh, okay before you guys go so um, Nuts Bolts where they can find you tour dates Twitter all that where they can give you like 10 million dollars and buy an iPhone. all the dub dub dubs you know if you just go to springstandards.com it's got all the you know it's got the like all the icons underneath for everything you can it's the hub to all the other little social network bits so the springstandards.com is the way to do it and And the record will be available on like iTunes, Amazon everything you can imagine as well as our own web store where in addition to just normal versions of the record you can buy one of only 900 handmade copies that we made of each separate EP amazing Um, so that's a fun little thing for if, if if you're listening in and you just are so in love with our music that you want something super limited edition yeah that can be available there for you Awesome. And uh, big shout out to Sarah from Girly Action for setting this yeah, up. We love you, Sarah. Super yeah. cool. She's the best. Um, she will be doing, like I said, this Snacky Tune Comp Volume 2. Which so cool. We look forward to seeing Yeah, we look forward to seeing You that, guys will man. be Volume 3, so like, give Sweet. me like a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll be fine. Um, Spring Standards, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thanks a lot. Next week we have Zambri uh, live in studio, which is going to be super rad. And then the Manhattan Cocktail Classic, uh, and possibly a couple other people because it's James Beard's award next week, and we, we're going to try and get some special guests. So nice. uh, make sure to tune in next week. And uh, what's the last song and which EP is it from? Uh, well, what if we leave it a mystery? Okay, fair. Ooh, this Ooh. one is sort of this one would cross the would blur the lines. Okay, it's, but um, incidentally, it, it, it's track two from either. I won't tell you. Which. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. One, two, three. Towers, light bulbs in the deep, tiny artificial eyes protect you while you sleep. So tell your mama that you gotta go, and even though it's cold outside, it's the only place that you know. It's a heavy home oh, 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 oh. Three steps forward, one step back Eggshells neath your feet And turn in all that's great Daylight's great defeat So tell your mama That you gotta go And even though it's cold outside It's the only place that you know To 
Thanks for listening to this program on the Heritage Radio Network. You can find all of our archived programs on heritageradionetwork.com, as well as a schedule of upcoming live shows. You can also podcast all of our programs on iTunes by searching Heritage Radio Network in the iTunes Store. You can find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for up-to-date news and information. Thanks for listening.